Hello, Targar friends. Hey, everybody. It's Jason Blaha here, and it's time for another work mode workout. And hopefully, we can keep it quiet long enough to film all 16 minutes of this. And if not, I'll just flip in music and finish it out. But it's quiet enough right now. I think we can get away with this and get the voiceover done. So today was dynamic effort squat and deadlift day. This was the second we've week of this week's band wave. Uh, next week will be the third week and then we'll go to chains. Now for those curious, it's five by five box squats. It was 12 singles today on the speed pulls, five by five chest supported rows, five by five hip belt squats. And then obviously I have stuff I do off camera. For those curious what I'm gonna do off camera, I'm gonna do glute ham raises, I'm gonna do ab work, and I'm gonna do grip work with the pinch blocks. All right, so we're gonna do. Uh, just so that you guys know for the wear, so that we're being transparent. So, the band tension. This is where it gets interesting. Running the extra band tension, totally different beast. Totally different beast. Um, I'm running 25% of my wonder at maxes now for band tension. That's a lot on your speed work. Like, you really have to drive through. It fights you, and it makes one heck of a difference. It makes one heck of a difference. It actually fights you all the way through. And I mentioned on the bench, it wasn't that bad, actually. Felt good on the benching. Felt good on the benching. The squats, whoo, especially running the density training to where I'm doing this five by five for speed with 90 seconds between sets. It almost has a conditioning component to it. It almost has a conditioning component to it. So, uh, Actually, the scenery is going to change soon, too. I'm actually very likely going to change my filming setup and where my gym is in the near future. I think we can get some better angles and, and a little better of a setup to, to train in, which will make the, the workouts a little more interesting, a little more fun. Because, um, again, I, I feel like I need a little more space. I need more space for camera angles. And so I've got, I've got a way I think I can do this and where I can put this gym that's going to be easier for that. So, uh, we'll mess with that coming up here soon. I've got to play around with it a bit, but I can't disrupt the flow of my training uh, to get it done, so we'll get it figured out. Uh, I just feel like this, this room I'm using right now is a little bit confined for what I'm trying to do at this point. I would like to be able to just maneuver better, get chains on and off better, have everything organized a little tighter, um, just to get better flow in my training. But, you know, this workout went good. It went good. Like, I was happy with it. Uh, you guys have seen when we get to the hip belt squats, we got the spud belt in. And it's a lot better. It's not perfect. There's no way to make it completely comfortable. You have to accept that. But it's a hell of a lot better, and I'm able to get depth, which is what we need. And we'll get to that when we get to it. Uh, but again, this tension makes a difference. When you start putting more than 100 pounds of tension at the top of bands, when you unrack it, you notice it. Right? You notice it. Uh, there's a totally different beast between band tension versus just dead weight. And even with this lightweight, like you feel those bands fighting you at the top because this is 55%, right? That's what we're running right now, 55% for this wave because it goes 50%, 55, 60. And then we switch to chains and reset it. But what I'm running is around 25% accommodating resistance. And that 25% is of your wonder at max, okay? So if your max is 400 pounds, what does that mean? It means you start with 200 pounds with 100 pounds of band tension. And then the next week you go to uh, 220 with 100 pounds of band tension. And you go to 240 with 100 pounds of band tension. And then you reset it and go to 100 pounds of chain. Uh, speed pulls. Oh, my God. When I went to more than 100 pounds of, of band tension, and yes, this is more than 100 pounds, even with the blacks on this, I've checked it. Because of the way I pull it over long ways with the doubled over, it actually ends up being more than 100 pounds. When I hook this black up to the, um, the squats, it's actually 100 pounds at the top when they're added together. It's something like 110, 115 for the squat height with doubled over when I checked it on my rack. So we're, we're doing about 110 to 115, which is actually a little less than 25%, but that's okay. Uh, I had to get used to it. These 12 singles, I was warmed up. My first single that I pulled with the bands over, even with just one plate aside on, I lost my balance trying to lock it. I mean, again, band tension's again a totally different beast. And this worked the hell out of my hook grip. 
In fact, the eighth set, I had to take a break, let my thumbs rest, because I, I struggled to lock it because it was slipping in my thumbs, and I had to re-get my hook grip back in for the last four uh, because my thumbs couldn't take it because I was doing 60 seconds between these. I was doing 90 seconds on the squats, and I was doing 60 seconds between these because they really aren't that heavy. It's just the explosive component of doing the singles. So these are every minute on the minute up until after rep eight. Then I took about three minutes, let my thumbs rest, and then I cranked out four more every minute on the minute. So, I mean, you're looking at took me about 15 minutes total to do all 12 because of that, maybe 16. Because a lot of people are asking, you know, what's your rest times look like on this? Well, for this, that, that is your rest times on this. Now, max effort, I don't time it. I don't care. It takes as long as it takes. If I need 10 minutes between attempts on max effort day, then I'll take 10 minutes. But I might take three. If I'm ramping up still, I might take one. Uh, the more volume-oriented stuff, the 5x5s, five five, I take at least three minutes. Because that's what all the hypertrophy protocols call for. Right? That's what they call for. So this, this felt good, though. This was good grip training. And like I said, it's, it's a different beast. It takes some getting used to. The first few reps, it felt so awkward trying to hold over 100 pounds of band tension at the top. But once I got into it, it got easy. Like the last four, uh, they were actually really easy. I felt like I could have done more other than maybe my thumbs were getting a little bruised. Felt like I could have done more. Um, but this sort of protocol does go up to 20 up to 20 singles and maybe I'll build work capacity over time. Maybe my thumbs will hold out and you know, we'll, we'll get it done. But yeah, so this is going to progress nicely. Um, I feel like it's going to have good stuff, good carryover. And again, I'm having to learn to get deeper. I've got to work on my mobility with that wider stance. That, that's going to be a big deal for me. And a lot of people will say stuff like, well, can't you stretch for mobility? Stretching doesn't improve mobility, guys unless you're stretching with 300 pounds sitting on your back. Okay, now if you put a 300 pound barbell on your back and you stretch with that, all right, that's, that might help. But stretches that don't load you to near maximum weights or at least uh, challenging weights don't do anything for mobility. Why would they? Flexibility and mobility are two completely different things. People forget that. Can you hit a one rep max? from that stretch position, that that's mobility. And sorry guys, they're, they're raking outside my door, literally. I clean it up out there, doing yard work, so it might get a little loud right at the door, but hopefully it'll be okay. So, yeah, this is all gonna help. The deficit deadlifts, uh, being able to do the hip belt squats to actual deeper depths, which is still challenging uh, but I'm going to get that down, then I feel like that's going to be a really important mobility tool. Be making sure that all my box squatting is done two inches below parallel with that wider stance. All right? Keep working on getting stronger at the bottom of these wider stances. In addition to using the accommodating resistance to get strong through the, the progress of it to lock it out. All right, We're going to get all of it dialed in. It's just it's going to be some work. Uh, but ultimately, the goal is to take my sumo deadlift stance and to squat with it. All right, that is going to be my eventual goal with a lot of this. And people need to remember that. Is that stance width I'm doing there, we want to be able to squat like that. And I need to be able to squat to a max like that. Right? So that's a big part of what I'm doing. So I've got to work those angles. I've got to strengthen all those muscles. I have to strengthen the, the muscle fibers involved with that, with stabilizing it. And it sounds like it's going to get too noisy outside for me to finish this voiceover. And I really want to get this workout footage up today for you guys. So the only way that's going to happen, I think I'm going to need to go ahead and flip some music in for most of it. But I did get the hip belt squat sorted. I ended up having to do the last couple sets to make it the most comfortable possible. I had to throw on a lever belt underneath there. But that sorted it. It made it comfortable enough to at least hit depth. It's obviously not the most comfortable thing in the world, but we're going to make it work. It's going to be a very, very important exercise from moving forward. So I hope it has been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.